Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at creating an energy cloud using a particle system. It will give us the opportunity to demonstrate how to make changes to the individual particles over time, such as the particles shape, rotation, color, translucence. So let's get started. Let's go up to Game Object Effects Particle System. The particle system is selected in the hierarchy. And over here in the inspector, we are going to be changing various attributes of the modules that comprise the particle system. And that's where all the work is going to be done in this tutorial. So if you click on the shape module, you'll see a cone widget appear. And sure enough, the shape is cone. We don't want a cone. We're going to change that to sphere. Now, we don't want the particles to be moving that fast. And we don't want them to be going out that far. So for start speed, we're going to change that to 0 0.05. And just so you know, that is a total guess. I'm not doing any kind of math to come up with these numbers. This is kind of the digital equivalent of sculpting. You just make a change until it looks the way that you want it to look. So it's now more contained, but we're just kind of seeing these particles blip in and out of existence. So we're going to go to emission and we're going to increase the rate. So let's bump that up to 250. So now you have this vague kind of cloud shape. You do see the in the outer border just kind of clipping in as a particle is deleted, as the particle uh, disappears. So we don't want that. We want that to be move, more of a smooth transition. So what we can do is we can change the size over time. That way when it disappears, it's smaller and not so obvious. So if we click on size over lifetime and expand it and click on the graph, that's the default graph. We can change it to that one. So it starts at full size and gradually declines. And you can see the effect that that gives you. Not quite what we want. I really don't want the particle size to change into near the end. But if you decide you like this effect, it gives it more kind of a wispy effect, that's fine too. So I'm just going to right click towards the, uh, the latter half here. And just going to adjust the slope with the controls and then move the dot up. So basically what the graph is saying is that the particle is going to stay more or less the same size for most of its life. And then at the very end, it's going to shrink. And it already gives the the size more of a kind of a, a, small, a smooth fluctuation rather than it just kind of like popping like bubbles it's already making it a little bit more nebulous, a little more almost like this is like a gaseous ball or something. Now we're going to make one more change, but I'm going to hold off. I don't like jumping back and forth, but if I change the, the start size, you're not going to see why. So I want you to see why. So let's go to color over lifetime. We're going to put a check there. I'm going to click here. The bottom is the color. The top is translucence. So if you click on this, You'll see alpha, we can drop that down. And then what happens is the outer edge will become more translucent. Actually, technically, the whole thing is becoming translucent. So depending on the effect you want, you might put, say, a keyframe here and bump that up to 255. That way, for this entire section, the translucence is not changing. The translucence doesn't start changing to here to the end. All depends what you want. So. Here, for color, we'll click there. And I'm just left-clicking, and it creates the keyframe. And let's choose an orange, because it'll kind of bump up against yellow by choosing orange. And over here, we'll choose red. Set that to 255.00, which is as red as red can be. Same there. So this is kind of similar to this. No change in colors cha happening here that we're basically emphasizing the red. So it's very briefly white, but it immediately starts changing the orange, starts changing the red, and then keeps the red. Now, see how you see those flickering white dots? The reason why that's happening is that's the white dots instantiating. So they're, they're, when they're being generated, they're being generated at full size, and so it's creating this really distracting effect. It breaks the the the, uh, the illusion that is this kind of this ongoing effect, this kind of self-perpetuating effect. You're seeing this scatter. 
So we're going to come back to size over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this being smaller. So let's add another keyframe over here, but we're just going to change this. And then suddenly that scatter goes away. That's why I didn't show you it earlier because you wouldn't really be able to see the effect. So now you can see it gets rid of that scatter and we're already actually quite close to where we want to be. So we've changed the size over time. We've changed the color over time. We've changed the translucence over time. So let's actually run this. So if you notice, it didn't exist for a brief moment and then started to appear. That's because of pre-warm. So see this pre-warm? So if you want the cloud to suddenly appear, okay, then you already have the effect that you want. But if you want it to be an ongoing cycle, you'd click on pre-warm and you'll see the difference. So rather than slowly appearing, it was already there. Okay, so I think the last thing that we're going to do, we're going to add a second particle system. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a wave, like a circle moving out away from this. So it's like as if it's constantly generating these waves of energy. And that's going to give us the ability to look at a few other modules. So let's go ahead, go to Game Object, Effects, Particle System. We'll go to Shape, but this time we're going to choose Circle. And then we're going to rotate this. Change this to 180 or negative 180. Because we really want the particles just to be moving on the Y and X axis. We don't really want them to be moving towards and away from the screen. So now what we're going to do, we're going to create a burst. So if you go to emission, rather than having a steady rate, you can get rid of that. And for burst, you can click on the plus sign, and you can just put an amount here that you want to go out. Now, just like the other particle system, we don't want it to last that long. So let's change start lifetime to say two, and let's change start speed to say, eh, we can leave five. Again, I'm not doing any kind of hard math. It's just kind of eyeballing what I think looks right. Now, keep in mind, every particle system has a duration. So we have a burst being generating at zero. So as soon as the particle system starts at zero seconds, it lasts for two seconds, which means you have a three second gap of nothing. So keep in mind, Things like that. So here, rather than having three seconds of nothing, I've reduced that. So basically, just after the first cycle ends, this cycle is again. Now we're just going to make some of the changes that we did last time. Uh, this, we're going to actually change the start color since we're not going to change the color over time. So we'll choose red. We're also going to change the size over lifetime like last time, size over lifetime. But in this case, we will use the 45 degree slope. Now, one thing that we're going to do, actually two things we're going to do. We're actually going to re 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 eliminate these circles, okay? And we're going to replace it with this. This is just a PNG, so it's just a 2D image drawn in a paint program. I use Anime Studio. You can use whatever you want. doesn't matter. Once you draw the 2D image, you just drag and drop it from the external folder into the asset area. Now, to apply this to the particle system, you have to create a material. So right-click, Create, Material, and we'll just call this Fire Mat. You apply the material to albedo. We change the shader. Let's do mobile particles. And I think additive is what I normally use. And let's see if we have to make any other changes. 
Oh, I didn't actually apply the material. Sorry. So you have the image, you apply it to the material, but then you have to apply the material to the particle system. There we go. And here you can indeed see it looks like the little S shape. Okay, so what we're going to do now with this particle system, since it's a circle, there is no point rotating it because it's a circle. You can't tell that it's rotating, but here, these aren't circles. So if we rotate this, it'll create an additional sense of motion. So what we're going to do, we're going to do, sorry, wrong one, rotation over lifetime. How many times do you want it to rotate? So if it's a if it doesn't last long, then even a small amount of angular rotation might make it rotate fast. If it lasts longer, though, you might have to hit a much higher number to get the effect that you want. So it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see that these are indeed spinning. And ideally, that's kind of what you want. You don't want to really... If the individual particle effect is obvious, you've probably made a mistake that you just want the player to see this kind of motion, this overall kind of effect. If they can really pinpoint what each individual particle is doing, the effect might be too subtle that you might have to make it uh, spin faster or do whatever else that you're doing. But now if we run this, it kind of gives us this more hectic effect where it really looks like it's breaking apart now. Now, one thing we didn't talk about is we're not really seeing it, but with particle systems, if you come down here to the, to the renderer, we have something known as sorting fudge. The tooltip for it reads, lower the number and most likely these particles will appear in front of other transparent objects. So if you've got two particle systems and you want one to definitely show up in front of the other, you're going to want it to have a lower number. So not really seeing it in this case, but you could always, if you want the ring to make sure it's behind this, you could just bump up the sorting fudge by a few numbers. Even one should be enough, but we'll bump it up to five. And I don't think we're really going to see a difference. Now what you can do is so you don't have to move these independently, you can take a particle system and child it or set another pa particle system as a parent. In this case, really doesn't have any adverse effect. I think it looks the same. But sometimes when you set a particle system as a child to another object, you suddenly see it change. It doesn't look the right, like, the right way, like it changes size or something. That's because of scaling mode. So when you link it to another object, you might have to change this to like hierarchy or shape. You'll know when you try it. So when you do the linkage, if it looks wrong, just look to scaling mode to get what you want. That is not to be confused with simulation space. What this is, is ultimately, is this a solid particle system or will it leave particle behind if it's in motion? So if say the particle system itself we're moving, would the particles trail behind it or would the particles not trail behind it? With locals, the particles would keep moving. With world, it would trail. So I do believe that is it for this tutorial. We accomplished everything that we wanted. I'm still seeing a little scatter of the white there. I'm not quite sure why we shrunk it all the way down. Might have to tweak that. Um, I suppose we could... Yeah, we could probably just tweak the size a little bit more, but I already showed you where that is. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Okay, so I hope that this has been helpful, and I hope you have a good day. If you have any requests, just leave a comment and let me know.